My name's Sean. Uh, I'm the director here at Verge Gallery, and I'd just like, before we get started, um, just take a second to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land, the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation, and elders past, present, and upcoming. This uh, university is built on stolen land, um, as is pretty much every surface that you walk on in Australia. So um, whenever we congregate and share our knowledge together in this educational way, I think it's really important to acknowledge the education that's embedded in this land um, and the knowledge that's been passed down for thousands and thousands of years on this site and on sites everywhere around Australia. Um, in that, this university is a very privileged space. Yeah, so we all inhabit this space of immense privilege, a space that has traditionally been inaccessible to a lot of people. Um, and I'd also like to acknowledge my privilege in uh, being in this space. I'm a white, cis woman from a pretty happy family background and those things have been things that have definitely contributed to where I am today and the sort of person I am today. And I would encourage all of you guys who work in the arts as well and who are part of the arts to similarly when you have opportunities to make space for people who have maybe not had the same privileges you had and be really aware of the privilege that has brought you into the position that means that you can be within these sites and really try and diversify the voices that are in these spaces and diversify the ways that we talk about those voices and not have it as like diversity but have it as just the bloody norm. So that's I guess a broader challenge to you. but. Back to the key themes of the evening. Um, so I'm just going to do a brief intro about Verge Gallery. Uh, it's the space that you're in now. Um, it's funded by the University of Sydney Union. So what we have here are some great representations of a whole different broad range of spaces around Sydney. So we've got Joe from Cement Fondue and Megan. Um, <laughs> we've got Georgia from First Draft Gallery, and we've got Nanette from Cold Cut. So these guys represent three very different gallery structures, and similarly, Verge Gallery represents another different gallery structure. So we're funded by the University of Sydney Union. Um, so not the University of Sydney, but the Union of the University of Sydney. So our first and foremost um, aim is to support students, um, and we aim to support students by uh, giving them opportunities to see a broad range of art, to be able to have professional development opportunities like this, to be able to engage in conversations with uh, artists, academics, in critical conversations and have a learning environment together, um, and also to be able to have them occupy that space and this space and be able to create a space where they feel able to engage or create something of their own and also do volunteer programs. And you would have met some of our volunteers at the desk today. Um, so, the way that we program our gallery exhibitions is by a call out. So, similarly to First Draft, we do a public call out uh, where people can apply to exhibit in the space. Um, recently, for 2018, we have funding to be able to pay artists. Um, so, learn, know your worth, guys. Don't, don't accept like ridiculous amounts of money that you have to pay to be able to show your work that you've also worked really hard to do. So we're paying, <laughs> paying our artists, um, also exhibiting the work. We're not paying them very well, so don't hold me to that. It's not, it's not a great pay, friends. Um, uh, and the way that we program is quite open. Last year, for example, we had 180 applications for exhibitions. Um, we've got a volunteer uh, Verge Gallery advisory kind of board. So that's all of the students that come into the space, that know the space intimately, that benefit from all the public programs and exhibitions. Um, and they get given all of the applications to look through. They get uploaded to a Dropbox. And then we have an Excel file. They look through them all. We sit together. I like put on some afternoon tea. And we sit and have a chat, talk about what the key or what the really good applications look like. Basically, we don't have time to go through 180 with a fine tooth comb, so we call out the names. If someone believes in that application, they raise their hand and they have an opportunity to say what they like about it, and it goes through the next round. So then we take what was 180 down to about 20, um, and from that 20, 
myself and the two Verge Gallery advisor or Verge Gallery assistant roles, so Helen is one of them who's here tonight, Rebecca Raymond is another one, um, we sit down and figure out what is going to make the program work or shine and, and how we can make sure that the exhibitions are quite different, that the voices are here are quite different or changing and how we can mix up with the public program. So this exhibition for example, this is Jodie Whelan's show and Kieran Bryant's show, so they didn't apply together, they were put together with in that programming process. Does that make sense? So what I'm just going to do to give you an idea about what we do is show you the EOI. So this is what the, it says private because it's not live. Um, this is what our EOI looked like last year. So basically it says what we do, what sort of gallery we are, images, floor plan, exhibition archive, so some examples of previous shows previous events and public programs, and then that's the submitting application. Ours is pretty clunky, so we use JotForm, which is pretty clunky, um, and just getting the most, the main sort of stuff, so preferred exhibitions, stuff that we need to know, and then we just ask for a 500 word statement and a selection of images. Something really important is to make sure that you PDF all the images and statements together. Follow the instructions. If it says in one PDF document, do it because when you're looking through 180 applications, you really don't have a lot of time for people that didn't follow the requested ways of applying. Um, I think that that's probably enough from Verge Gallery because you're going to get so much more content from these guys and a lot of the same things you're going to hear over and over again. Um, we've partnered with Kudos Gallery, uh, which is funded by ARC, University of New South Wales, and Luke from Kudos is here as well. So on Saturday, we've also got a workshop where we're going to have um, some applications to look through and the people coming to the workshop will have their own applications as well. But uh, even if you can't come to something like that, Verge Gallery has um, a program where if you're a student at Sydney University, you can bring in an application that isn't finished and show it to myself or Helen or Beck and we'll give you advice and have a session with you before the applications are due. And that's for us just a way of making sure that we're bringing UCID students up so that they're going to be as competitive as possible with the other applications. Um, I would encourage you to do the same thing with your peers, with uh, contacts that you might have, with anyone that you can sort of chew their ear off. Your mates, when they're successful in something, email them and be like, can I see what you did? Because it's a <laughs> mystery to me. You know, so try and just be ballsy, be out there with it, because all you've got is your community and we all work really bloody hard, but we also all need to bolster each other up and get, get ourselves and people that we believe in represented. So use your community and feel free to always come into Verge Gallery. We're an educational facility first and foremost, so even if you're not a student, we've always got someone at the front desk who's really happy to have a chat with you about your stuff. Na -na! Hi, everyone. <laughs> Hello. Uh, my name is Nanette. I am a curator based in Sydney, but I'm also the co-director of an artist-run space in Petersham called Cold Cuts. Uh, has anybody heard of Cold Cuts before? Yes? Okay, that's very great. <laughs> that's amazing. Um, so basically, we are a garage. Um, this is the garage. Inside this space, we have only one wall um, that is a full wall. Other than that, we just have exposed timber frames in which you can play around with. Um, this house is actually one of our director's houses. So in terms of... Uh, I guess residential properties, we do have to keep the neighbours in like in cahoots with when we are going to put on a show um, and give them a little like noise warning. But we only have opening, uh, sorry, closing drinks on Sunday, five till seven, so it's not a big uh, event. Um, we chose this garage because basically it's not a white space and you have to be challenged by the space in which you're given. Um, and in this particular tiny little room, um, you are expected to provide us with more responsive um, proposals as opposed to a general call out, um, which I'll kind of go into a little bit later. Um, so Colcarts is run by seven board directors and we all have different um, backgrounds in art or curating, design, and also in music as well. Um, so in terms of the great Australian arts ecology, we're definitely at the grassroots level. 
Um, we are an artist-run space that is run by artists for fellow artists. Um, so we definitely promote, um, I think, just more organic sort of ideas and experimentation. We're definitely open to that, especially because our space is not conventional. We want to see things that are a little bit different. Um, and also fit within a very short period of time. So we only show once a month, it's over an entire weekend. So we have Saturday we're open, but Sunday we have a closing event from five till seven, and that is it. So we kind of like the fact that this model one is less stressful for all of us and for the artists involved, and it kind of breaks up the sort of Sydney art scene with little, I guess, short um, sporadic bursts towards that rather than having a long um, period of time in which to have a show. Um, some of the artists I've spoken to about this model have said that having that short sort of short time frame has forced them to be a little bit more creative and really force their sort of um, concepts and ideas into a really short period of time, which I think is really exciting. Um, basically, the way that we work is each director has one month allocated to them. Um, so usually we'll get two slots a year. And majority of the time, we do just have an open proposal. So we're open all year. You can send in your proposals. We don't have like a deadline. Um, and the director can either put on a show for themselves, which is very selfish, but also <laughs> which is why we started the space. Um, they can also invite an artist or an artist group to show in the space. Um, and you can also uh, choose from the proposals that we have on file, which is usually um, via email. Um, and, but yeah, like I said, we are super flexible. And if you do have any inquiries, just like communicate with us directly because we will respond pretty much immediately because we're all on our phones. This is what our, one of the walls looks like in our space. This is, was from a massive group show run by two of our directors. Um, so this happens quite a lot as well, where two directors may come together to curate a show, which is also really exciting, bringing two different networks of people together. Um, and we want to represent everyone. If you're a local artist, international, emerging mid-career, we don't care, just like send in your proposals. If you're up for the task of being in a tiny space that doesn't have any white walls or nice lighting, go for it. <laughs> um, so yeah, basically send us your proposals. Uh, if you have any inquiries, yeah, you can email us. Um, we also, yeah, are on Facebook and Instagram. Our website is still getting developed. Uh, <laughs> it's halfway there. And um, twice a year, though, we do do like a select group call out. So this will kind of pertain to a particular theme. Um, and in these particular um, proposals, we usually, well, call-outs, we do look for proposals that directly um, recognise that theme. So I think sometimes uh, when you are looking for opportunities all the time as an artist or a curator or, or a creative person, you kind of tend to overlook those sorts of things. So try and really focus on what the call-out is for. I think that's a really important uh, note. <laughs> uh, we usually promote these on social media only, so we don't have like a newsletter call out by email, it's just uh, Facebook or Instagram for these sorts of things. Um, and we are free, so there are no costs to show with us. Uh, we take zero commissions. We did have our first sale at our last show, which was very exciting. Um, but we just get the interested buyer straight in contact with the artist. There's no sort of in between. Um, and any costs that do occur, like maintenance or bath stuff, um, all of us directors kind of distribute those costs between us. Um, so for cold cuts, what we're looking for when we receive proposals. Um, it is really important to us that you have visited the space before applying. Obviously, we don't have a conventional model, so it's not as easy as being like, this is what I want to put on. I expect beautiful, pristine white walls, um, a beautiful lighting arrangement, and uh, I guess social media and documentation, all of those things. We don't have money for that, and that's why we created the space as well, because we wanted to bring all of that back and just have art for art's sake, and that's it. Um, 
Again, like I said before, proposals should respond or reference our space, uh, especially if they are really direct in being why they want to show in a garage space, which I think is really interesting. Um, we are also super excited about proposals that are experimental and flexible and also merge different sort of, um, I guess, backgrounds together, whether it's identity or different ways that you practice. We love seeing those sort of crazy fusions of things and having maybe a DJ set with a live performance. Like, we're definitely up for all of that. Just remember 5 till 7 on a Sunday, though. <laughs> Um, and yeah, we just want you to, I guess, respond to the space, including um, the massive driveway that we have as well. Um, so I put together some handy tips that I have found personally when applying for applications and proposals, um, as well as kind of what we expect sitting on the cold cuts board. I think with um, exhibition proposals, it's super important to be more descriptive and less conceptual in your proposal. Not to say that you can't bring yourself into the application, but I think you should leave that conceptual part for your room sheets or your catalogue should you be successful. I think if you're trying to apply for a space, let that person know what you're applying for and why. Um, also, make sure that you make reference to the gallery spaces that you're in. So if you want to, for example, say, I really want to place these reflective works next to the gallery window because during the day the light will hit it at different angles and it would be beautiful, that sort of thing. Like, be super specific about why you would place a particular artwork in this gallery space. It means on the receiving end, they know that you've been to the space and you care and you've thought about how your work is going to respond to their space as well. Um, I think simple and concise proposals, again, really important. No more than 500 words, which is usually pretty common for call-out applications anyway. And always put together a really beautiful high-res documentation um, sample of the works that you want to um, put in the show or if you have past work that you want to put in, um, always with titles, materials, and dates as well. Um, this is something that I do all the time, is I get someone else to proofread my proposal, preferably someone who's not even in the arts, because if they can understand what the hell I'm talking about, then so will the person on the receiving end of these applications. I think that's really important. Sometimes when you're working on these things, you get way too much in your own head, and you just need to step back. Um, and also just make sure that your grammar is on point, please. Um, and like Sean was saying before, everyone does have certain things that they need, that they're requesting. So make sure that you send those things in. If they're asking for 500 words, don't give them 550. If they're asking for 10 images, don't give them 20. Just give them what they're asking for. And that means there's going to be less back and forth in general. Um, and this one as well, I get nervous when I notice that there are art spaces that don't have call outs, because I'm like, how do I get in there? How do I apply? Is there someone who's like in charge of all of that and I need to be best friends with them just to get in? Like, I don't know what the process is. I think you just need to engage. So walk into the art gallery, speak to the directors, speak to who's on board, see if they know what the programming schedule is like and the process for that, and um, just try and hustle your way in there <laughs> as much as you can. Um, so if you would like to contact us at Cold Cuts and send in a proposal, uh, these are the three ways that you can do that, via email, Instagram, or Facebook. You can send us any of your questions. We're more than happy to respond. And that's it. Thank you. Uh, are, we, are we doing questions now or after? Now? Yeah. Questions? <laughs> yes. We do not. So we just had a show a couple of weekends ago. Um, that was a call out one for the uh, eighth unofficial location of the Sydney Biennale. Uh, that was called Hijacked. So our next show, I don't think, is until maybe the end of this month or starting of June. Yeah. Any other? Yeah. 
No worries. Thank you. Very good. <laughs> So hello, um, I'm Georgia and I'm an art consultant at ArtBank, but um, in my spare time I'm also a co-director at First Draft Gallery. I'll be talking specifically about First Draft Gallery and our uh, exhibition program, uh, but the tips I'll give you will be useful for any um, exhibitions that you apply for. Um, before I start though, I'll just tell you a little bit about First Draft and, and our program. So, um, at 32 years of age, First Draft is one of the oldest um, artist-led spaces. Um, the gallery was formally established in 1986 with seed funding from the Australia Council. First Draft is currently located in the City of Sydney's Riley Street Depot, which is in Woolloomooloo. Um, however, previous incarnations have been at Chalmers Street in Surrey Hills, Parramatta Road in Annandale, and the very first space was on Abercrombie Street in Chippendale. The relocation to um, the Riley Street Depot has meant that the gallery has able to expand and we've got four purpose-built gallery spaces, an administration office, two artist studios, as well as a sort of lively outdoor courtyard space. We're a publicly funded independent space. Um, we have generous support from uh, federal, state and local governments. Um, we receive multi-year funding from the Australia Council, Create New South Wales and the City of Sydney. We also have kind support from individual donors and philanthropic contributions. Um, this sort of model has allowed us to champion risk and encourage ambition in a professional gallery context. So First Draft is run by a board of eight to 10 rotating um, volunteer directors who each serve a two year term. This uh, rotating model of governance allows the gallery to remain um, current and critical and ensures that the relevance um, ensures the relevance and longevity of the organisation. The directors are sort of emerging professionals um, who come from a variety of arts backgrounds, uh, artists, writers, curators and administrators. And each term, new directors bring different interests and skill sets to the gallery, um, sort of ensuring a diverse and vibrant artistic program. But in addition to the board of directors, we also have a general manager, uh, Tisha Mallet. Uh, a program officer who's responsible for sort of volunteer management and installations, um, Bryden Williams, and Sophie Penkethman Young, who's our communications and administration coordinator. Um, we're also supported by a team of wonderful volunteers, and we're constantly looking for new volunteers. Um, and we have an advisory committee who provide legal, financial, governments, and other specialist advice. <coughs> So since 1986, First Draft has championed emerging uh, critical and experimental arts by supporting innovative artists, curators and writers at the beginning of their careers. While we primarily work with artists in the early stages of their career, we also act as a space for established artists to develop experimental work outside of their existing practice. Um, so the gallery's mission was and still is to provide a pro professional and critical environment in which artists can exhibit outside of mainstream commercial galleries and larger institutions. Um, it has significantly professionalised in the last few years, but in 1986 it was very much at that grassroots level. Uh, our annual exhibition, our annual program sort of includes uh, up to 48 exhibitions a year, but we, on top of that we have an emerging curators program, writers program, as well as um, several public programs, including four live nights a year, which uh, focus on performative and sound-based practices, uh, around the outside events, which are sort of informal, discursive learning sessions. We have monthly artist talks for the exhibiting artists, and we have an annual fundraising option. So across that program, we support um, about 95 artists, curators and writers in, in a year. Our program is accessible to artists through an open call out, much like Verge Galleries. Um, twice a year, artists are encouraged to submit proposals for our exhibition, curatorial and writers program. Um, this twice yearly call out ensures uh, the program is responsive, responsive and relevant. Um, and in my tenure as a board member, um, the programming rounds have been really competitive. We get uh, about 250 applications across exhibition curators and writers. Um, and I've really seen an increase in the professionalism and, um, and quality of the applications over my time. And um, I'm very proud of the exhibitions that we've put on in my time. <laughs> so our most recent program call-out closed in April. 
um, but we'll have one uh, in September, October this year. But I've taken the, the sort of information um, document just so we can have a look at what it actually looks like and what you're expected to submit. Um, there's information here about artist fees and the regional New South Wales Artist Fund as well as what to submit on the right hand side. So recently we transitioned from a model where artists pay for an exhibition to one where we pay artists for an exhibition and we give artists a fee of um, at least $1,000. Um, additionally, in order to reduce financial barriers for regional New South Wales artists and artists travelling from interstate, we've set up funds uh, which support artists with travel, accommodation and work transport costs that they will incur for exhibiting with us. Um, if you're applying for our exhibition program, you'll receive a $1,000 artist fee and additional funds are available if you're from regional New South Wales or interstate. We can provide curatorial advice, um, installation assistance and access to our equipment, um, digital promotion um, across our website, um, mail outs and social media platforms, an opening night event and bar provisions, inclusion in our public programs such as an artist talks. And the artist talks are often a great opportunity to develop your public speaking skills and, to, um, and ways of talking about your work in, in, in a group context. Um, we also will uh, get professional photographs of your exhibition taken and, and send these to you for, 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 to keep. Um, Sorry. I'll try and speak louder. <laughs> um, on the right hand side there, there's a note about what we ask you to submit. So we ask for a maximum one A4 page with 500 words detailing your exhibition title and the concept. Um, in addition, we ask for a CV, again maximum one A4 page and up to 10 images of your work or one video link to an external site such as YouTube or Vimeo. Similarly, if you're applying for our curatorial program, um, in addition to the documentation, um, opening night event and um, promotion on social media, etc., we'll give artists a $1,000 artist fee to exhibit and there's also a $1,500 curatorial fee um, which supports production costs and a publication. Um, again, you'll need to submit one A4 page, maximum 500 words detailing the exhibition and concept, um, a CV for uh, the curator and the artist involved, and up to 10 images and video link again. For our writers program, it's slightly different. Um, writers also receive a $1,000 fee. They can choose to have a studio space for one month in, at first draft. Um, we offer introductions to mentors and peers. We've recently um, uh, organised a partnership with Runway where um, we can introduce our writers to someone on the Runway board for a mentoring advice and there's a possibility for a sort of um, presentation on, on, their, on one, Runway's websites as well. Um, but there'll also be a presentation outcome uh, on our website or during one of our public programs. So often these occur during our Around the Outside events where we'll have a discursive sort of learning day where we bring the writers in to talk about what they've developed over their six months. Um, what you submit is quite similar though. One A4 page, maximum 500 words, um, CV, uh, a sample of your writing and um, video links. So this is the floor plan for first draft and we have four gallery spaces. Gallery one which is by far the, the biggest sort of gallery which we reserve for curated exhibitions and gallery two, these are both upstairs. Um, gallery three and gallery four are the smaller spaces, don't have any natural light um, but they're good too. <laughs> So um, when writing your proposal, much the same as what Nanette said, it's really important to be clear and concise. Um, you don't need to be too um, conceptual and you certainly don't need to waffle on um, 500 words, really keep it contained. Um, use headings if it helps and you can certainly use dot points. Um, that really makes things clearer when we're reading 250 applications. 
Um, again, get someone to read over your application. If they can get a clear understanding of what you're trying to say, then we probably can as well. Um, yeah, and uh, it's also really good not to overcomplicate your proposal. Often, a simpler exhibition is better. You don't feel the need, don't feel the need to completely fill the space with works um, and ideas. And yes, if we ask you to submit your um, proposal as one PDF, please do it because <laughs> it does make things a lot easier. So we're not trying to find images and proposals separately. Um, again, professional documentation is really key for any practice. Um, make sure you're providing images that are as high res as you can. Um, make sure they don't need editing or cropping. Um, caption your images. It's really good to know what we're looking at. Um, we can get a sense of scale, um, who the artist is. If, if you're proposing a curated exhibition, it's really good to know that. Um, and for your CV, um, a good CV should be no more than two pages. Um, for first art proposals, we ask for a one-page CV. Um, and this should include you know, um, basic biographical information, your name, contact details, um, your address, website if you've got one. Um, sometimes people like to put their date of birth and their place of birth. You don't have to do that. Um, it's also often nice to include a bit of a snapshot about who you are and what your practice is about. This can be in the form of a short bio or an introduction into your areas of interest. Um, and then other sections I've listed up there um, can include your education, mentorships, internships and volunteering experience. Uh, what solo exhibitions you've had, group exhibitions you've been in, any curatorial projects, scholarships, prizes and awards, grants and residencies, lectures and guest presentations, publications, collections, bibliography and referees. It's really important to make sure that your CV is updated regularly because if you leave it um, to do every year, there's a lot to add on often. Um, so when we're assessing applications, all the applications are read by the Board of Directors who critically score each one based on a number of set criteria. Uh, the Board then gets together as a group and re-evaluates each proposal as a team. So um, by the time we're getting together, we, sh we would have read your application twice um, and, and we sort of rank them like that. Some of the things we think about um, when assessing proposals are, does the project reflect first draft aims in supporting emerging and experimental practices? Is the project well thought out and realisable in the galleries? Is it relevant to current cultural discourse? Has it been shown before? Um, does it make sense in terms of the direction of the artist's practice? Are we supporting a progression in their work? Does the project push a medium, technique or field of inquiry or an area of practice? And is it clearly defined in terms of who's involved and are all the participants confirmed? So successful applications <coughs> included a clear description of their um, exhibition outcomes um, through text and or floor plans. Floor plans are really great. I'll show you an example of one later and how that's really useful. Um, they had concise summaries of artistic practice and conceptual interests and it's a statement of how the proposed work um, diverged from their current practice um, and clear images with captions. So this is one example um, that we've been given permission to show. And this um, was Athena Thebus' uh, proposal. Um, Athena was successful and had an exhibition in 2016. Um, so you, you can see their proposal on the left and CV on the right. Um, it's, uh, there's a title at the top, um, followed by an introduction into their practice and a paragraph on the exhibition concept. Um, each of the components of the exhibition are then detailed and we get a good sense of the physical outcomes of the exhibition. It finishes with a statement on how the exhibition departs from previous practice. Their CV on the right is one page, it's clear. Um, and then these are some of the example images of, of previous works. And here's what the exhibition looked like when it was shown. Another example is Holly McDonald, who showed with us last year. 
Uh, Holly had also been a volunteer with the gallery for a very long time, um, so it's, it's often nice to see um, people who have been part of the First Wife community um, working with us and then progress into having an exhibition. So Holly has stressed how the exhibition is experimental and how it diverges from her previous works. Her overall description could have benefited from some subheadings or dot points just to make it clearer when you're looking at 250 applications. But on the right you'll see she has included a floor plan and this is really helpful. This is, she's just taken a screen grab of the floor plan that we provide in our call out document um, but put in, you know, a locations for her artworks. And this is really helpful um, for us to envision um, her proposal and at any time we can go back and refer to this diagram and get a snapshot of her proposal without having to read through um, all the text again. Um, Holly's also included one page CV, it's clearly laid out with subheadings. Um, she hasn't included professional images but they're clear and they're good captions um, and these uh, images get a, provide a good sense of what her previous works are like. And this is what the exhibition looked like. This was in Gallery 4 so it's sort of a bit harder to take good photographs because of the size and angles of the gallery. So <laughs> with roughly um, 20 exhibition spaces to fill each call out, the amount of successful applications will of course be limited. But if your application isn't successful, we encourage you to apply again. Many of the programmed artists uh, are programmed after their, first, uh, their second or third application. If you do apply again though, we um, ask that you don't simply resubmit the same proposal. Show us that you've developed your ideas um, and refined your work over the six month period. It's okay to use the same support images, but if you've got some more recent examples of your work, include these two. It'll just show us that you've, you haven't just you know, clicked file upload, um, you've thought about what you're applying for. Uh, feel free to contact us prior to submitting your application and ask any questions about the process or your proposal as well. We're always open to that. Um, I thought I'd put up a list of other spaces, which um, most of these take um, call-outs. Um, have call-outs or take exhibition proposals. Um, if you don't know these spaces, it's really important to follow them on social media, um, join them their mailing lists, go to their exhibitions and become part of their community. That's how you'll meet these people and, and know these spaces um, and how you can find out about when they're taking um, proposals. Um, and yeah, as I said at the start, First Draft's next program call out will be in September, October, and that's for exhibitions between February and July next year. Um, and if you've got any questions, you can always contact us. Yes, <laughs> lots of questions. <laughs> I think we're going to make all these slides available for everyone tonight. So. <laughs> yeah. 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 One per person. Yeah. Yeah. So, yes. The question was, if you're applying in a group exhibition, uh, is it one CV per person, or would you like a CV for the whole group? Um, one CV per person would be ideal, but depends on how many people are in the exhibition. If there's 25 people, that's going to be too much for us to flick through, so you can kind of collate them. But yeah, if it's a group of five people, that's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so if we are submitting something for a group show, how many artists would you like to see confirmed? Um, at least half. The qu sorry, the question again. Uh, <laughs> um, if you're submitting a proposal for a group exhibition, how many artists need to be confirmed? Um, at least half, just so that we know um, that there's uh, that the exhibition, you know, has can go ahead, um, and that you've at least engaged a few people before submitting your proposal, so that the artists at least know about the project, and and you can um, contact the rest um, once you've confirmed. So on our website we say up to two months. Um, it's generally much sooner than that. Um, for the last programming round, the directors had read and assessed all the applications within two weeks of the closing date. Um, and, and then they're contacted the next week. Um, if you're asking more about the, the time to submit your application, I think the call-outs are open for two months.
Yeah. Um, how, what level of hostile information or The question was um, often we're asking for exhibitions six months out and the ideas might not be fully formalised yet. Um, and, and what level of, of, of confirmed <laughs> that should, should we be um, submitting? Um, you need to be able to provide enough information for us to get a sense of the project and what it will look like in the space. But we do understand that um, these ideas will change as you make the works. Often the works won't have been made yet. So um, we're really open to um, artists developing the works over that six month period before the exhibition. Um, the directors will get in contact with you during the, the lead up to the exhibition, check in with you, see how you're going. Um, um, chat to you, see if, if the proposal has changed in any way. We don't mind if it has radically changed from, from your proposal. Um, we just like to be kept updated and, and, and it'll still go ahead. But uh, <laughs> yeah, um, we totally realise that these things are all up in the air and, and often you'll be still working, working out an idea that doesn't, that fails or, or something. So yeah. Yeah. So the question was that in um, proposal, successful proposals, I've pointed out that the artists have often said how their, this project diverges from their previous practice. It's not an essential criteria for us, but um, I'll, I'll go back to the slide um, where we talk about uh, what kind of things we look for. I think it's on here. Um, so we assess the application on a number of things, um, but um, as, a, as a gallery which really champions experimental and emerging practice, we are always looking for ways in the artists uh, are creating something that's experimental and it doesn't have to be an experimental art form, it can just be something that's experimental to them, like taking on a new, a new art form or di you know, diverging in, in some way. It's not, you don't have to um, say that, but um, if, you know, if it is, it's always good to say that. We, we look at a number of different criteria, so it, it's not dependent, dependent on, on yeah, getting, being successful. Yeah? I'm wondering if there's any kind of limitations in the space, like are there any walls that you can't nail into? There are. So the, this question was about um, limitations in the space. In gallery um, two, which is upstairs, so you're not allowed to drill into the ceiling. Um, you're not allowed to paint the gallery walls black just because um, the turnaround for installation and deinstallation um, is two days and it's never enough time to make the walls go back to white. Um, apart from that, you could probably get away with most things. Um, we ha yeah. <laughs> um, you know, maybe not taking out things like windows, but yeah, you can you can mess it up. We really, yeah, we, we encourage that. <laughs> yes, you can. Yeah, just not black. It could be dark charcoal. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so we have these fluoro tubes um, around the gallery space, but we've also got spots and. Um, a whole number of things that you can have access to. If you want to bring in your own lighting, um, you can do that. Gallery One's quite a good um, gallery space to do that in because you can see we've got the beams, so there's lots of sort of hanging points in there. So is that just for sampling the artist's work? Yes, so um, in terms of number of images to include in your proposal, um, the 10 images can be of, of actual physical works that will be in the exhibition. They can be of your previous works, um, or they can be kind of indicative works. Athena had included uh, an image of some flip floppy Healy shoes things, um, which was similar to an item which was going to be in the show. Um, 
yeah, so, um, you know, if you've got um, images of the works uh, already, put those in um, over previous works. Um, but with 10 images, there should be enough room to, to, to provide quite a bit. Does the artist have to have a sense of the specific space? That helps, absolutely. Um, so just to give us a, a, an idea about what it will look like and what we're actually going to be presenting in the space, um, it really helps. It also helps for us to know that you've thought about the exhibition that, and thought about the gallery that you'll be ex exhibiting at rather than just submitting a proposal to Verge and to First Draft and to Cold Cuts. Um, you're actually submitting a proposal specifically for First Draft and you've thought about which gallery you can see the work in and you know, how it might, how it might sh hang and show. <laughs> Yeah. Um, it's a very practical and very question. Um, how do you support artists in selling their work? Sorry? How do you support artists in selling their work? Do you have in selling? Yes. In selling. Oh, in selling. So we don't take a commission as well, um, but we we advertise the exhibitions on social media, uh, on our websites, occasional listings. Um, we have a mailing list that goes out to about 3,000 subscribers. Um, occasionally we'll get a bit of uh, media as well through sort of concrete playground or broadsheet, those types of places. Um, we, if somebody is inquiring about an artwork for sale, we'll put them directly in touch with the artist um, and we don't take a commission. Um, often if an artist uh, wants the works to be for sale during the exhibition. They can have a room sheet which has prices and their email address and contact details ready to go. So people often take those and just contact them straight away. Some people don't like to put that kind of information on and are more, you know, but would be open to a conversation if someone was interested. So yeah. it's a great moment to introduce Joe. Yeah. <laughs> from Spend Blue, who is really good at selling art. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being here and having me. <coughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Um, cool. Uh, Hello, I'm Josephine Skinner, um, and together with Megan Monty, I'm one of the two directors of Cement Fondue. Um, we're really, really new. We launched March 10. Um, we've only just finished our first exhibition. You'll see some of that in a little bit. Um, so in this um, presentation, I'm going to really try and give you a bit of um, an insight into who we are and what we're doing. Um, and then I'll get to um, possible ways that you can get involved. Um, so bear with me, I'm going to get there. Um, so just uh, really quickly as an overview, um, Cement Fondue is an evolving art space located at 36 Gosble Street, Paddington, Sydney on the land of the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation. Um, we present a diverse year-round program of visual arts exhibitions that feature performance, dance, and music by Australian and international artists. Uh, our art store, project space, online presence, and program of public events aim to offer alternative and engaging ways for people to encounter artists and their practices. Dedicated to new creative possibilities and greater understanding we serve a collective curiosity toward each other and the matters of our time. Um, okay, so seeing as this is a Kudos uh, partnered event, and hopefully you all know where Kudos is, and we're kind of near Kudos. Here's a map. <laughs> um, Kudos is here, we're there. Um, uh, multiple routes, thank you, Google. Um, it's probably about a 10 minute walk downhill from Kudos, which is a bonus. Um, yep, and you can also get to us like via King's Cross, so <coughs> make sure you're 
Be calm. Uh, who is Cement Fondue? Um, as I said, uh, I direct with Megan Monty together. Um, and pretty much it's just the two of us doing most things right now. Um, we have a very small board that we'll hopefully expand. Um, so we have Kathy Friedman and Bronwyn Renix. Uh, they were the directors of Stills Gallery. We are in the location of Stills Gallery. Um, that's, that's a connection. Um, right now we just have a casual gallery uh, assistant, Taji Moore, uh, who you may, may know. Um, and we also um, obviously have a team of casual staff, so that's installers, event staff, we have an accountant who comes in once a week. That just gives you a little picture of um, us. This is us. <laughs> um, uh, so what was our motivation to start Cement Fondue and what brought Megan and I together? Um, Megan and I share a passion, uh, not just for contemporary art, but also for curating it. Um, and we really see the practice of curation as challenging, creative, and change-making. Um, we both come from curatorial roles, albeit having worked in uh, really different types of galleries. So for 10 years, I worked in um, a commercial photo media gallery that was Stills Gallery that I mentioned earlier. Um, as I said, where Cement Fondue is now. Um, and also for 10 years, Megan was working in Campbelltown Arts Centre, which you'll know is a public art space. Um, and also what brought us together is that we share the belief that art spaces are crucial in the present day for offering welcoming safe spaces and common ground for the articulation of difference and the opportunity for exploring new connections, whether those connections are creative, theoretical, or even social. Um, and hopefully all at once. Um, what is Cement Fondue? Uh, we're not sure we're still happening, um, but the best way to summarize it is we're a hybrid gallery model, which is really vague, deliberately. Um, but essentially it reflects mine and Megan's professional backgrounds in the public and commercial art sectors. Um, and the model also reflects our vision for how galleries can become more fluid in their approach to artists, their approach to audiences, and their modes of presentation um, in order that they can continue to thrive in what we all know is an uh, ever-shifting art psychology. We don't really know from one year to the next what funding is going to look like, um, what's going to be happening. So we, we need to be shifting and changing and responsive and we're going to try our best at that. Um, so to summarize, we are a free public art space. We're not a commercial art space. We don't represent a stable of artists. Our main um, objective is not selling work from our main shows. So we aren't, um, we aren't a commercial gallery like Stills was. We are very different. Um, we have private assistance for our operational costs, which is how we come into being, um, which we're very grateful for. Um, in order that we can be as um, ambitious as possible with our program, and we are being ambitious, um, we're actively seeking public funding to make our program happen. Um, and again, that's a work in progress because we've only just opened our doors. Um, and lastly, we're being entrepreneurial. Um, we have an art store, we have a project space, and we have um, private venue hire. So I'll speak to some of those a bit more. Um, there was a question of kind of where we fit in the arts ecology um, and my first thought was to just say that people keep asking us who is our target audience and we just can't answer because um, we genuinely don't have a target audience because we want to offer something for everyone which is ridiculously ambitious we know but that's that's what we're starting with we're gonna you know work back from there um, so, yeah, where do we see Cement Fondue fitting in the ecology of the arts in Sydney? Um, we want to complement the existing art spaces in Sydney by drawing inspiration from key aspects of what makes each of them vital to the broader arts ecology. Um, so that means we're really interested in trying to um, create the energy of ARIES and the way that they embrace experimental and new forms. 
um, and you can probably see this most clearly in our project space, um, which will become um, open to um, submissions, which I'll speak to a little bit later. Um, we also aspire to the high caliber of presentation that you find in commercial spaces and also obviously their entrepreneurial approach, i.e. they sell work. Um, and we do that via our art store, which is commercial, um, via our project space, which as I said, will be for hire. Um, and the gallery is also going to be available for private hire in between shows. Um, that won't be something that we're going to be putting on our public face on our program. Again, that's a way that we're trying to generate income for ourselves to feed back into artist projects. Um, and lastly, uh, we also aspire to the caliber of artists, uh, the immersive installations, and a focus on the actual art of curating um, that we find in public art spaces. Um, and I guess the clearest example of that is in the main gallery space. Um, so how does it take, how does this all take shape in Cement Fondue? Um, firstly, uh, let's look at the, the main space. So we're focusing on curated group exhibitions. Uh, we're presenting early career to established Australian and international artists. Uh, these shows aren't really open for submission or proposals. Um, Megan and I curate these programs. You know, that's not to say that if perfect thing comes into our inbox, of course we're going to kind of, you know, figure out if it fits in with something, we'll, we'll make it happen. Um, but yeah, it's, it's very much a curated program. Um, this is an image from our first exhibition, Suburbia. Suburbia was a very large group show. It had over 15 artists and collectives. Um, as the name suggests, uh, the plan with Suburbia was to basically um, welcome our local suburb in, um, introduce ourselves to them, and then actually expand the notion of suburbia out from there. We wanted to reach um, the western suburbs. We had a really strong presence from um, western Sydney. We had four artists from the Parramatta Artist Studios in the show. Um, we uh, really wanted to explore suburbia in um, a conceptual sense and start pulling it apart and asking what does suburbia mean today in um, in a shifting Australia. Um, and so we presented um, everything from um, Tangentera artists um, who are painters from around um, Alice Springs. Uh, we also presented international video artists and there was um, installation, there was dance, there was ceramics, um, there were audio works. Um, so you get the gist. It was a big show and we were trying to uh, give people a taste of what we're going to be trying to do in the future throughout our program. Um, so coming up in 2018, um, not, people know, not many people know this, so woo! Uh, next show is Sense, Emily Parsons Lord, um, cross with Law Prevo. Emily Parsons Lord, I'm sure a lot of you know. Uh, she's a local installation um, artist. Law Provo uh, was a Turner Prize winner in 2013, so we're showing video works of hers. So we're very excited about that. Um, we then have Between Suns, um, and then we have Warm Bodies. So in this, uh, I won't go into the details, this is in the slide that you can see later, but um, this year we have four shows, uh, and there'll be more next year. Um, how else does um, our vision take shape? We're, we're really passionate about exploring, expand, exploring, expanding, exploring and expanding ways that we can incorporate live performance, music, dance, and social events into a visual arts context. Um, and we're doing that by featuring performance artists. Uh, this is Radha Labia, who is in suburbia. Uh, we also have music. We, we have one jazz night every exhibition in which the jazz artists uh, have responded to the show theme. So that's a really fun night. Um, we also had DJs at the end of our last um, exhibition. We have a really beautiful musical collaboration coming up with Emily Parsons Lord um, and viol players. Um, so they're really traditional string instruments. So we're looking at a really diverse approach to uh, music and how it can sit within the visual arts context. Um, what else are we doing? We're incorporating dance. We're having fundraisers. We have the Refugee Art Project um, coming up 
uh, not the next show, the show afterwards, and also um, a fundraiser auction for Life Force Living with Cancer. Um, we have social projects coming up with Between Sons. Um, we've team, team filmmaker Mona Ibrahim with the Refugee Art Project to make a new commission. And we have a US artist called Jamie Warren who's going to be coming over and working with Kari in their indigenous youth workshops to create a Halloween performance in the space. Um, so that gives you a broad picture of how our main shows are trying to bring different kinds of art forms into the visual arts context. Um, how else are we trying to realize our vision in the art store? Um, so the art store is curated um, to change and complement, um, so it changes with each main gallery exhibition to, to complement what we're exploring there. Um, it features unique and additioned artworks, uh, artist merchandise and apparel. Prices range from under $10 to around, it last, uh, the last um, art store we had, the most expensive work was $4,000. Um, it's a fun space for us, and we hope it's a fun space for people who come. So last time we had a, a takeover by Rosie Deacon. Um, so um, you had these shelves, and obviously you had what looked like a kind of traditional art store, but she also had um, things hanging from the ceiling, and she had artworks in the space too. Um, and it was a really immersive kind of space. Um, and it's going to look very different when we open in a week and a half, um, and it reflects what's happening in the main space. Uh, so it's an opportunity for artists to, to sell work outside the more rigid commercial gallery context. It's an opportunity for us to broaden the ways we engage visitors, hopefully in a kind of fun, light-hearted way. It gives more than one reason to visit our gallery. Um, and it also allows us to connect with broad art and design fields, so whether that's design studios, whether that's publishing, um, whatever. Um, there's going to be lots of plants next time, you know, whatever works. Um, we also are really passionate about partnerships. Um, so with Suburbia, we had four partnerships, and you can see uh, three of them here. Um, we partnered with Sweatshop Western Sydney Literacy Movement to um, uh, transform four written pieces, um, written texts, experiences by young Australians um, of diverse backgrounds. And we um, turned those into performed audio works that you could listen to when you're sitting on these um, banana chairs. Um, we partnered with the Tangent Terra artists, so we have their paintings in the space. We partnered with Data Editions, they're an international video platform. Um, that's been really exciting for us, that gives us access to um, some really big international video artists that we can have in the space. Uh, those artworks are for sale, but not by us, um, they're for sale via Data Editions. Um, and we also partnered with Studio A. Um, studio A are a supported studio in Sydney. They work with artists with intellectual disabilities um, so they can help break through barriers and um, allow those artists to um, realize their creative aspirations. Which brings us to the project space. Uh, we're really proud of what we uh, achieved in the project space for Suburbia. Um, so, like the art store, it is curated to complement the main gallery exhibitions. Um, the emphasis on the project space is live, playful, immersive and experimental projects. Um, and that can include artist residencies and workshops in the space, um, artworks that evolve over time, uh, and just new existing artwork presentations. Um, in 2018, this is by invitation, so we have a program this year. Um, this was Rosie Deacon with Studio A's Emily Crockford. Uh, they were responding uh, really literally to our local suburb of Paddington. They would um, come in once a week and they would go around Paddington and they collected the stuff off the streets um, and they took photographs and all of the colors are inspired by their photographs and they painted everything. Um, and there are also portraits in there, um, of, literally of our neighbors that other Studio, Studio A artists painted, and those integrated into there. Um, so for us, it was a really beautiful project and a really beautiful way for having artists in the space. Um, the, all the por portraits that sold from this show, um, the profits went all, all to Studio A and the artists. Um, so coming up in the project space, we've got Tali Arnott, Le Leilani Johnson, the Refugee Art Project, and Leticia Olivia Gargano. Um, that's this year. 
Um, and really the project space at the moment is really the best way for people to start thinking about how they might engage as artists with us um, if there are more emerging artists. Um, so 2019 is open to submissions um, for one to eight week projects. Um, at the moment, we don't, we don't have enough funding in order to make this free. Uh, it's something that we aspire to, it's something that we're working to, but we can't do that right now. Um, so the project space for us, it needs to be a space where if we can, we can start um, at least uh, getting a little bit of income that, as I said, all goes back into our projects. Um, as it stands, we're looking at a higher fee of $500 per week. Um, submissions will be selected for the way that they complement the gallery program and offer ways to activate the space. Um, submissions can be sent to hello at cementfondue.org um, and please just use the subject heading of project space submission and your name. Um, submissions should be no more than one A4 page and summarize your proposal and your bio. Um, they should include a link to proposed work or related work and have attached a small selection of image files. Um, proposals should be well thought out with a consideration for overall feasibility, technical considerations and include any ideas for live activations. Um, and unfortunately we don't have the staff capacity at the moment to offer um, just general feedback or advice. Um, we'll only be able to get in touch if the submission um, is of interest and we can kind of chat through the ideas a bit more. Um, so just some tips for applying to us and just I guess generally and yet yeah, a lot of this stuff has been repeated. Um, so for, oh, that's a, obviously the uh, call pack. That's a project space down at the bottom on the right. Um, Tip one, uh, do visit the spaces that you're interested in um, a few times if you can uh, before approaching so you can get a real sense of whether you're a good fit and vice versa. Um, as an aside, when I used to work at Stills Gallery, it was a photo media gallery, we'd get submissions coming in um, for really traditional painting and it was like, guys, you know, like, meet us halfway here, you're not looking at the website, you haven't come in, um, you know, a little bit of research goes a long way. Um, so, yeah, next point, just basically, if you can't get in physically, this is what the internet is for. Um, uh, kind of going a little bit against the tip over here. Um, don't just rock up and expect to sit down with gallerists um, because it can come across as pushy and arrogant, especially uh, when gallerists are so busy. Um, that's not to say you shouldn't go in and um, make contact and say hi and show that you're, you know, a nice person. But um, yeah, don't rock in with your portfolio and computer and think that you'll have a half an hour chat because it, it's just, it's just not something that we can do. Um, in, uh, yeah, so instead of doing that, contact galleries and. Find out how they like to receive submissions if it isn't clear on their website or whatever. So, and um, this was noted before, like don't assume that all galleries like submissions in the same format. Um, just, just find out, just kind of ask and um, galleries will let you know. And then, as everyone said, just do what galleries say they want and then um, it all works really nicely. Uh, so make sure your submission is as pain-free and easy to read, understand and enjoy as possible. So short and sweet, minimal art speak and good quality photos or videos. Um, your work needs to speak for itself. Um, so galleries uh, love working with normal human beings and not big egos. Um, sometimes we can overdo it. Uh, when we're trying to sell ourselves, and um, we, you know, that's understandable. But um, yeah, just being an, a nice person goes a, a really long way. Um, get yourself out there and invest in yourself. So uh, it really gets on gallerist radar if you've been shortlisted for prizes, um, or finance your own RE show, or your City of Sydney pop up, or whatever it is. Apply for residencies. Um, do what you need to do so that curators uh, can encounter your work, looking at its best, 
in the world. So, you know, we might often get images of work um, that's kind of never had a life, and it makes such a difference to see it installed and properly lit and to get a sense of how something sits in space and that you can think about how something sits in space um, rather than, you know, it might be a beautiful image, but that doesn't help us kind of imagine, well, what's this going to look like installed? Um, so, yes, big, big, big one, invest in good quality documentation. Um, do, do have a show of some sort, even if no one sees it but you, and then just get a really good photographer and it'll look amazing, and then that would just go so far, honestly. Um, have a presence online that you can keep up to date, fresh, and visually appealing. Um, that needn't be a website. Our website isn't up, but we'll get to that. Um, and kind of lastly, truly don't take it personally if you don't hear back or if you get no's, um, because that's really normal. Um, and you really don't know the criteria or the context the curators have in mind when they're selecting. And that's really, really key because we really do, and we have really developed ideas or we're really excited about a certain area that we're exploring. And your work could be absolutely incredible and fantastic, but it just might not fit in that context. And so don't take it too much to heart, you know, if, if you're not um, getting picked up because it just might not have been the right fit for either direction. Um, and yeah, just keep, keep going, don't give up. Big one. Um, the best way to find out about what is going with going on with us is Instagram um, and we're trying to be pretty active on Instagram um, so we're at Cement Fondue please follow us uh, you can find out what is happening our events um, in the future how you can participate um, so that's a really best way to go forward with that um, and final I'm at the end I promise um, just a little plug uh, it really is good to come in and see the space if you're thinking about how you might participate and the best way to do that is to come to our next opening. Um, so that's Saturday, May 12, 6 to 8 p.m. Um, Sense Emily Parsons Lord and Lord Prevost. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, we'd love to see you. Uh, we'll be there. Um, the end. <laughs> um, that's a really good question. Um, and it's a little bit of Russian roulette, but um, honestly, I just think you just uh, you just need to be into what it is that you're doing. And don't worry too much about what we're looking at, and just um, put forward, you know, put your best foot forward of what you're excited about and what you're doing. And um, if it's if it's going to fit and if it's going to work, then we'll be really interested. Um, yeah, and if and if it doesn't, then it's probably not the right space or time for you either. A mix of both. Yeah. Um, it's always good to know who's submitting the application. So you can say, you know, my name is this, I'm submitting this application, I've curated this exhibition with these artists. And then when you're talking about your practice, you can totally talk about yourself in the third person. Which you would do with your artist bio anyway. So it kind of ties in that way. It's, it's hugely important to have a depth to your work. Um, you know, we don't need to be in the initial contact, hit around the head with the theory. Generally speaking, you know, that's embedded in the practice, it's embedded in the work. Um, it, it's always a pleasure when there's, there's that depth there and um, you can be drawn into what, what's being made and then uh, hear and learn more about what's going on there and that's the joy of art. Um, so, absolutely, research-based um, work is is incredibly inspiring and important. Um, but, but as you know, in terms of a proposal, you, yeah, you you do need to be kind of uh, getting over the line, probably with um, images or video first, um, and then in a really simple way, um, without art speak, um, just really clearly and concisely articulating the theory and the research behind it. Um, and then trust that in uh, future conversations um, you can really start uh, pulling apart and kind of digging down into that depth um, and that can kind of come out as I think someone mentioned in like room sheets in artist talks and things like this um, so yes absolutely um, 
Um, we don't formally right now. Um, all I can really say is, I suppose, watch this space. I know that's <laughs> annoying. Um, but we're, we, we are literally, when I say we're an evolving art space, I mean, that's 100% true. We're, we're not quite sure even in a week's time what our needs will be and if we're going to be reaching out um, or interested in that. So we're not doing calls out for volunteers. We probably don't even have the capacity. We don't have the staff. We need the volunteers to look at the applications for volunteers, you know. So um, we're not there yet. But, um, yeah, please keep us on your radar and um, I'm sure down the track when we're bigger and we'll, we'll actually be able to give you know you need to be able to give volunteers and, and people um, time so it's a really good experience for them and at the moment we're maybe not in a position to be able to uh, give that energy in that direction as much as it deserves um, but no doubt at some point we'll get there so yeah First draft is always looking for volunteers. <laughs> um, and if you're doing an internship through uni as well, um, we're open to placements as well. So yeah, if, if anyone else would like a volunteer or an internship position, feel free to contact us. <laughs>